Hey there, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a series of reusable button styles on your website using the Generate Blocks Pro Global Style System. So to get started, just edit any post or page. And what I'll do first of all, is just add in a button element. Make sure to click on the little blue icon, which is the Generate Blocks button. And you'll notice that there are some default styles on a button when you first drop it in. One thing I wanna point out in particular is that by default, the display is set to inline flex. Otherwise, if it doesn't have a flex property on it, the editor here specifically will look kind of wonky sometimes. It'll work fine on the front end, but you might have some issues on the back end. But just making sure your display is set to inline flex will fix that. Now, what I wanna do is go ahead and let's create our first global style here. It's a good idea to prefix your buttons with something maybe like an acronym, maybe like the first letters of your agency name, or you could always just do something like BTN hyphen primary. But in this case, you kind of open yourself up to a little bit more conflict because other plugins and other products might use a similar class name, whereas with a prefix, you might not run into that. Naming classes is a whole conversation on its own, so we're gonna keep it simple today and just go with BTN hyphen primary. So I'll click on create. And what I can do right away is copy the local block styles, or we can start blank. I'm gonna start blank, and I wanna show you just a couple of things. So the first thing we would wanna do is change our background color here. So under the background color, I'm gonna click on just kind of this darker peach color, my global color, which is coming from Generate Press as my theme. And you'll notice that it doesn't change the color here. And that's because the local block styles of this particular button are gonna take precedent over the global style. Just like in CSS, if you styled it at the block or ID level, rather than the class, the block because of specificity is gonna take precedent. So what we can do here is actually just clear out this local style. And now you can see what I was talking about with the display property. So let's click on our global style here and go back to layout. And we're gonna set this display to inline flex. And now we're starting to see a more representative button once we've set this display property. So make sure you do that. I'll go ahead and collapse this panel. And what I wanna do in this case is let's set our spacing. We're gonna do padding on the top of maybe one rim, left and right of two rim, and then on the bottom of one rim. Okay, we're definitely getting somewhere. With our borders, we're gonna go ahead and join all these borders and say one pixel. We're gonna do that same border color, global color nine here. Then for our border radius, we wanna make this kind of a pill shape button. So we're gonna go with 100 pixels. And then I'm just gonna change the button text here to say learn more so it's a little bit wider. Now I'll minimize this border and then in the typography section, in this case, our text color probably makes sense to be white. And then maybe we wanna bump up the font size just a little bit like 1.125 rem. And then our font weight, maybe we want it to be like 500 and perhaps you want a text transform of uppercase. So this is starting to look pretty good. Now you'll notice a minute ago when I hovered, I did have a hover state where the background color changed and we can achieve that in the global style system. If we scroll back up to the top, you can click on the hover button here to get to the hover state on this particular global style. And it's just like if you wrote it via CSS, you have the class name of button hyphen primary, and then you add the pseudo selector of hover. So now anything we do to this particular global style is only going to apply on the hover state. So typography is still selected here. So let's go change this to backgrounds. And then for background color, we're just gonna make it go to this lighter peach color. So when we hover, we can see that now that background color changes. Perfect, so then the other thing we would wanna do is add in a box shadow on hover. So we can go to the effects panel and we can go to box shadow. Now you can build this manually if you want and you can stack as many box shadows as you want together. So what I'm going to do real quick is just simply delete this one. And there's this neat little tool, tons of box shadow generators out there, but I like this one. You can see the website link up in the top there. And this box shadow is multiple layers here. So all I have to do is just simply copy this. Then I can come back into my box shadow and I can go to add via paste, drop in that CSS and look at that. It's gonna add all those layers of box shadow for us. So now when I hover, we can see that it kind of lifts up off the page, although it's a little bit abrupt. So what I could do is I could go back to my main selector here, go to effects, find transition, and then we can go to duration of something like 0.2 seconds. And when we hover, we can see the box shadow effect and the background color change is nice. One thing I did forget to do is on the hover state, we probably would wanna change our border color here to that lighter color so it doesn't conflict. And just like that, it's looking good. Now, another thing that we can do is maybe you have a few different types of shadows, which is fairly common. You might not want to attach a specific box shadow to this class. So let me go ahead and delete all the box shadow properties from this hover state. And what we could do is go back. We could click this plus to create a new global style. And maybe you type in for the style name, something like, you know, shadow primary, maybe create. 
and then blank style. And again, we would just go to effects, box shadow, and then we can paste it in or build it manually. So now this box shadow is actually attached to a utility class and we can reuse that anywhere we want. Then if you have multiple different types of shadows, you have the flexibility to apply whichever one you need on each specific type of button. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. Now let's say we have a case where we have a second button and what we want is essentially the inverse of this button. We want a transparent background that will show through whatever's behind it, but then on hover, it fills in the color like we see here. So what I'll do just for example's sake is I'm going to duplicate this button. And what I'll do is wrap these two in a container. I'll go ahead and click on this button that says add to stack and that's gonna give us a flex column. We'll just align items to the left and then we'll set a row gap here of two rem to space these out a little bit. Now on our second button, and I'm happy with the way this button looks in terms of its padding and rounded edges and all that kind of stuff. So I don't wanna create that a second time. All I need to do is go add another style here. I can go BTN hyphen secondary, click on create, blank style again. Then in this case, we're gonna set our background to that same peach color, except we're gonna make it fully transparent. Then we also want to change our typography color to something that's actually readable, maybe like our dark brand color here, global eight, or perhaps even maybe the same kind of peach color like this. And for example's sake, let me go ahead and wrap this in a container as well. I'll quickly give this some padding on all sides. And then on the color, just using this base color here, we can kind of see that that gray background color fills in on the background. Now it already looks really close and really the only thing we've done here is just change the background and kind of the text color. When we hover, we need to make a slight adjustment to that. So let's go back up to our button and this time just ensure you click on the button secondary global style. Again, we're gonna go to the hover state here, go to typography. And then in this case, let's check and see if something like white looks good, it sure does. And you'll notice the background color is transitioning nicely. And that's coming again from our button primary global style, because of course that's where we attach that transition property to. And just like before, because we duplicated the button, the shadow primary is there. But if for whatever reason on the secondary button, you don't want the shadow, you can simply remove that global style. And then that button is just kind of sitting there flat on the page. Now, another really common button style you'll see if I just duplicate this is one that kind of looks more like a link where there is no border on it. So what I could do is just simply add another global style. Maybe we call this one button hyphen link because it looks more like a link. We'll click on create. Blank style is fine. And then in this case, we're gonna set our border to you know basically one pixel, same color as we've been doing, except we'll just make this one fully transparent. So you'll see this set up really commonly in things like Google's material design buttons, where although it kind of looks and maybe should operate as a link, it still takes up the exact amount of space as their other buttons to keep things kind of consistent. And typically what happens on those is the hover effect is not actually a background color fill in, it's just the border. So on this button link class, we could go to hover, border, then the one pixel, and then that same global color as before. And then for our background, we would just set this background to, again, same kind of transparent effect as before. Got to change the typography here. <laughs> so then when we hover, the only thing that's happening is now our border effect is transitioning. Now I'll just go ahead and update all of these global styles because I want to show you another important part of this. So with each of these buttons, you can see that we have a variety of global styles. The order in which you add them to the actual element itself doesn't matter because it's just like if you attach the class to the element manually in HTML, the order on the element itself doesn't matter. But what does matter is the actual specificity of those global styles. So if we go look at generate blocks and global styles, here we can see all those things that we just added, all those global styles. You may already know this, but you can view what styles are attached to each global class here. So you can see all the various different things we did from background colors to display, inline flex, font sizes, all those kinds of things, as well as the hover state here. And just like in CSS, the class that comes later is the one that's going to take precedent. So because this button link comes after button secondary, if these both existed, whatever the properties of button link are, will take precedent. Now, of course, I could reorder this if I need to. So for instance, if you know I put button secondary in front of primary, which obviously doesn't really make sense, you get the idea though, that then all of the properties of secondary would come before anything else. I'm just gonna put this back obviously because that's the way we would wanna do it. But I wanted you to know that this reordering system works exactly as CSS does and the specificity applies from top to bottom. 
Now, moving back to our buttons here, the benefit of using this stacked class approach is that then if I go into my button primary class and let's say I wanna add a little bit more padding or maybe some more width, I could do something like, you know, maybe crank the padding on the left and right edges to four rim. And then you can see because all of those buttons share the exact same button primary class, they're all inheriting that same padding increase that we just gave it. So this is a really great way to keep your styles manageable as your site grows. And in a case like this, if I were to need to make a change like I just showed for the padding or maybe the border radius or something like that, I do it from one spot and it cascades down to all the other buttons across my entire site. I hope this look at global button styles is helpful for you. If you have any questions for us, do please let us know in the comments and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Again, my name is Jonathan. Thank you so much for watching.